Hello everyone and welcome to the last classical game I played, uh, not ever but the last classical game I've played so far uh, until I played the, uh, the next tournament or, or the next match or something. Uh, a lot of you have been asking me to show some of the games uh, that earned me my candidate master title and uh, a lot of you have been asking me how come I don't compete in Leech's titled arenas. Well, uh, my candidate master title is a national one, not an international mo not an international one as most of the tournaments that I play in Croatia are not ELO rated. So uh, my, my ELO is around, I don't know, around 1900, but uh, in my national rating I have crossed 2100, so that's why I received the, the, uh, the national candidate master title. Uh, and there are no games that actually allowed this, I just played, uh, I don't know, out of the last 20 classical games I've played, I've played, uh, you know, some good chess and I was, I think I won uh, 19 out of 20, I only lost one. So this is one of the games that I decided to show you, I don't really have them anywhere digitally saved, I opened my drawer and this is <laughs> the first one that popped out. Uh, it's from the, the last tournament, like I said, I played and uh, I already won the tournament, but I have to win this game, uh, otherwise I don't, uh, <laughs> I, I don't think I will be, ha I will have enough points uh, to get the candidate master title. So it's really an interesting matchup, I'm playing against a, uh, a well, uh, he's also from my hometown, from Kriševci, he's a very successful young fellow, uh, he does well in pretty much everything he does in school, he really, you know, uh, kicks ass, so to say, and uh, he's pretty much a beginner in chess, but he really does well, he's, uh, if he invested more time in chess, I really think uh, he would be an awesome player, and uh, I don't think he's uh, been, he's played chess for more than a year. Uh, you know, seriously, and uh, he's not really serious about it, he just, uh, okay, he attends some classes, but uh, most of the work I think he does uh, by himself, and uh, one of the inter interesting aspects is that I played him last year, where uh, it was an interesting game, we played the same opening as this year, but uh, I expected him to play the, the same opening we played last year, and I also know that he watches my <laughs> videos, so also was very interesting for me uh, to, to see, see how I do. So okay, I tried the exact thing I played last year against him, e4, as I usually do in classical, in classical games. Uh, he played e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and I played for bishop to c4, as I usually do. I don't really like the, the, the Rue Lopez. Uh, and he played knight to f6, as he did last year. And I continued with knight, so we have the two knights defense and knight to g5. I'm going for the f7 square, and uh, I wanted to see if he improved uh, on the game that we played last year. So he continues with the d5, as you should in this position. We have e capture some d5, uh, and now knight to a5. Of course, if you capture, then you can go into the fried liver attack with knight captures uh, on f7. And uh, if you don't know this line, you should know it, uh, as you will be able to win a lot of cheap games uh, in bullet against beginners uh, or, or even in blitz. Uh, if black captures and then after let's say queen to f3 check, he goes to g8, then you can just easily uh, finish the game immediately with a nice bishop checkmate. So one way to go about it, but of course my opponent uh, knows, uh, knows his openings, he goes knight to a5, uh, the main line, bishop to b5 check by me, c6, uh, pushing the bishop back, first I capture on c6, we have b captures on c6, and now bishop to e2. Uh, he kicks my knight away, h6, this is still uh, the main line, I, I go back, knight to f3, and now he plays e4. Last year, and this is where he improved, e4 is the strongest idea here, last year he played the bishop to d6 here, and that is uh, somewhat an, an, an inferior move. But okay, here he continues in the strongest fashion, we have e4, a knight to e5, and now bishop to d6, and I play d4 still, both of us uh, just playing main moves here, and uh, if, uh, I don't know, when I was uh, studying some opening theory from old books, I believe queen to c7 was was the uh, main line here, but here, uh, in the, the age of computers, e captures on d3 is the main line, and this is what my opponent played, who, remember, uh, I said that he doesn't really play all that uh, much chess, and he's, uh, you know, He's, he's pretty much uh, great at everything he does. So, uh, <laughs> pl playing the main line still after 10 moves. Uh, we have knight captures on d3, now I have to capture with the knight, otherwise I'm gonna lose a piece on e5. We have knight captures on d5, and now, uh, to, to give you an example, for example, uh, Chongsheng Zheng had this position against Pentala Hare Krishna in 2018 in China, uh, where uh, Hare Krishna castled here, uh, but this is not the main line. The main line is queen to c7, and this is what my opponent plays. Uh, but our, our game will transpose into the Hare Krishna game once more. I play h3 as I want to castle, I don't want the h2 pawn to remain a target. Uh, Mateo castles, I castle here, and here we have rook to e8. Uh, Hare Krishna in that game against uh, Zeng played c5 here. 
uh, where you want to play bishop to b7 and get your light square bishop to control this diagonal, but here he went rook to e8. And okay, uh, I thought uh, I, I have to start developing my pieces. I, I am up a pawn, but if I don't start developing my pieces, you don't really uh, get to enjoy your extra pawn. So I thought about maybe knight a3, knight f3, knights here, but first I decided to play bishop to f3. Uh, just uh, gaining control of this uh, nice diagonal, and okay, it's not a problem, the engine doesn't mind this move. Uh, we have uh, bishop to a6. Uh, there is one game in the database where bishop to f5 was played, but here after bishop to a6, we have a completely new game. Uh, as of move 15, so uh, very nicely done. Uh, and here again, yeah, you could try something like knight to c3, start developing in some normal fashion, but I, I didn't like this, I was expecting rook b8 or something, and then I didn't want to, I didn't know where to develop my dark square bishop, I can't really develop it to f4, I can go to g5, uh, e3, what, what's it really doing there, I'm gonna make my b2 pawn a weak pawn, so instead I decided for bishop to d2, seems really weird, uh, but I wanted to get my bishop uh, over to c3. And okay, he played knight to c4. Uh, a nice idea, excellent square for the knight. He attacks my bishop, pressures the b2 pawn. I play bishop to c3. And now I do have my bishops on very strong diagonals. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, when's the last time you saw a bishop on c3 and an f3? Those are usually squares reserved for the knights. But if it works, why not? Uh, and here he goes knight to e4. He says, I either want to capture your c3 bishop, he wants to eliminate my bishop pair, uh, or he wants me to capture with the light square bishop. So here I decided that uh, my dark square bishop is the better bishop here, uh, and I capture an e4. Bishop captures, we have rook captures, and this allows me to develop uh, without wasting time, as now I can develop my knight with an attack against the knight and the rook. So I play knight to d2, attack both of his pieces, and now he trades. Knight captures, I get to develop my queen, Queen captures on d2, and now he plays rook a to e8. So now he has two excellent bishops here, uh, and uh, he has control of the e-file. He has nicely double rooks on the e-file. Uh, it would be somewhat better, you know, if this bishop was here. It would be a much nicer battery, but, you know, you can't always uh, get everything. Uh, but I don't mind. I don't mind the bishop pair and the control and the e-file. I just play rook fe1, and I say, okay, uh, I'm pretty happy with trading rooks. For example, if he traded here, let's say I, I trade, he trades, I get queen captures, and then I'm still up a pawn. So I don't really mind. He can play c5, get his bishop to this very nice diagonal, but I, th I think I can defend and then start playing around his queenside weaknesses. Uh, and uh, I can always block one of his bishops. For example, I have triple control over the e5 square. I can play bishop to e5, trade off one of the bishops, and then he doesn't really have the advantage of the bishop pair. I'm just up a pawn. And if he wants to prevent this by playing something like f6, then yeah, it's a weakening of the king side. I have queen e6 check, and then uh, my position seems uh, seems uh, perfectly nice. I have an extra pawn, and all is well. So here he has to decide what to do here. Probably best here is to play c5. Uh, get his bishop to this diagonal uh, if if i want to force me to capture on e4 but uh, you know not not force matters but here he played bishop to f4 and it's a very nice idea that uh, i i, I checked uh, before I played rook f to e1, but uh, I didn't like it, and I didn't like it for a good reason. Uh, so feel free to pause the video here and try to figure out why I didn't like this uh, bishop to f4 idea that my opponent played, uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent offerer of queens. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the, the engine gives queen captures on f4 as best here. This is not what I played. Uh, he offers a queen here because the point is, if you capture the queen now, then rook captures with check, uh, king to h7 and knight captures here. And you get this position after queen captures, uh, rook a to e1, where you have two rooks for a queen, and uh, the bishops are of opposite colors, so white is better here. Uh, but I didn't uh, like this position, uh, so probably because, I don't know, it's been a long time, but probably since, uh, since the bishops are of opposite colors, I thought maybe c5, bishop b7, he can, uh, you know, uh, stir some trouble. <laughs> on my king's side. So instead, I did offer the queen, but not in, uh, in, in this fashion. I didn't play queen captures on f4. Instead, I played rook captures on e4. And now my idea is now he can't capture the queen because now if he captures, I just uh, capture on e8, king h7 check, and now just pick up the bishop. And now I have two rooks and the knight uh, for, for a queen, which is, of course, completely winning now. So here I'm saying you cannot uh, capture my queen. You have to 
just captured the rook, he played rook captures on e4, and now I just played knight captures on f4. I say, I I'm trading down, and you have, uh, you know, three pawn islands, I have only two, I'm up a pawn, uh, I'm, I, I don't have a problem playing this endgame, I will push this for a win. And here, he should probably capture with the queen, and after trading queens, we, we get this endgame where I get rook, rook d1. The bishops are of opposite colors, but still. Uh, like I said, I, I did enjoy my, I did like my two pawn islands against three pawn islands, and uh, I don't know, I, I thought it was uh, going to be too too hard to, to defend the queen side weaknesses. Uh, but here, he actually played rook captures on f4, and now this really doesn't work, so once again, feel free to pause the video here, try to find uh, what move I played. It's really not all that difficult, not even a tactic. I'm sure you all see it, uh, rook, a, a rook to e1, and now there are simply too many threats for, for black to deal with. Uh, there's bishop to e5, just, you know, uh, winning material, and it's very hard to prevent this. Uh, uh, th there is no way to prevent it. Uh, rook to e8, also a pretty big threat. Uh, so whatever you play here doesn't really work. If you play f6, trying to prevent this bishop to e5 move, still you get rook e8 check, king h7, and now queen to e3 uh, would be deadly with the idea of rook to e7, now that uh, the king side is weakened, and there's, again, not that much you can do. After rook e7 lands, the queen will have less squares to keep an eye on this rook here. So whatever you play, let's say bishop c4, rook e7 is a big threat, let's say queen d6, you have to keep an eye on the rook here, but now queen captures, and there is no way to defend the g7 pawn. So this is, you, you can give one check, but there are no more no more useful checks, you will, uh, you can try threaten some uh, nasty discoveries here, but, uh, you know, black is in the, in the mating web. So, uh, for example, a checkmate would follow. So here, there are no good moves for black, and uh, my, my opponent unfortunately blundered here. He, play, he he just wanted to get out of the pin, and he played queen to c8, and he hung a whole rook here. So not uh, not the most classiest way to win my <laughs> my CM title, uh, but, you know, uh, like I said, it's not this game that won the CM title. It's the, my, the 20 previous ones that uh, I was able to play good chess in. Uh, this is just the one that I absolutely had to win, and even though it, it was against a uh, low-rated opponent. Uh, you can see that my opponent really uh, studied his theory and he, he played a he played a nice game. Uh, even though uh, when you play this line, when you sacrifice a pawn for activity, you generally want to avoid trading. And here, my opponent just allowed me to, to trade material and then just take advantage of the position. And well, of course, in the end, he blundered, but it was, it was still a very nice game from him. And I <laughs> really enjoyed it. And he really, uh, well, played much better than last year so I can only imagine if he continues uh, brushing up his chess skills how, how strong he will be next year so this is one of the games uh, you wanted to see one of the games I will show some other games uh, if you're if you're interested still uh, uh, since we have two days now of rest in the Riga Fide Grand Prix so uh, I thought it was a, n a nice time to show one of the games. So congratulations to Matteo for, for playing such a very nice game. I uh, was able to win the tournament with 100% and I was very happy about it and win my CM title. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it and I would just like to make a short announcement. I hit 20,000 followers on Instagram and I will be making a chess quiz. Uh, nice 15 questions, uh, you know, to check out your uh, vast knowledge. I, I was going to do it on YouTube maybe, but uh, I don't know when my... Uh, air conditioning is going to be repaired and uh, I don't know if I will be able to use the PC then so I can't really make a promise that's why I'm going to use my smartphone to do it on Instagram as I can do it pretty much anywhere uh, so it will be held at 8 p.m. today uh, Central European summer time so some two and a half hours uh, well two hours uh, after you see this video if, if you see it right away uh, but yeah hopefully uh, I did announce it uh, pretty much everywhere but uh, for those who haven't seen it uh, hopefully you can make it as it's uh, it's going to be very nice it's going to be easy 15 questions if you're a follower on the channel so I I, I don't think you should worry about anything uh, I would like to thank uh, Jeff Grace and David Leal for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it as usual you can check all my previous videos here thank you all for watching and I will see you soon uh, hopefully with some more interesting content. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day and happy uh, International Chess Day to everyone.